before we start, I feel like I need to give you a warning. This video could give you an existential crisis. In the last year, I've been doing a lot of research into the neuroscience of dreaming and human consciousness, and one basic fact about the wiring in our brains and body has completely upended the way I think about consciousness and the very nature of reality. In the end, I think the problem is resolvable, but it has made me rethink everything I thought I knew about the hard line between dreaming and wakefulness. With that out of the way, I want to tell you about that one one indisputable fact of neuroscience and human anatomy that got this whole thing started. Everything that you perceive actually happened in the past. In order to sense anything from the environment around you, chemical and electrical signals have to first pass through a series of neurons and pathways that form your peripheral nervous system and into your brain. The total time varies according to the actual length of the pathway and the type of signal, but on average it takes sensory information about one-fifth of one second to go from outside of your body and into your brain where you experience it. Now that is pretty quick, but there's enough lag in the system that it could mean the difference between life and death in certain situations, and thus it plays a role in how we evolved. If, for instance, a jaguar was running at you from somewhere in the bushes, or someone from a neighboring tribe threw a spear in your direction, what you did and how you reacted in that fifth of a second matters if you were going to make it to the next second. This was evolutionary pressure. Luckily, your brain, over time, evolved a solution. Even without the time gap, your brain has to assemble all of the sensory data from the environment to construct a simulation that is intelligible to a human mind. That simulation is not a perfect one-for-one -one replica of the world, but instead is what your brain has decided that you need to experience in order to be an effective organism. For instance, there's lots of stuff that happens to you that you have no access to whatsoever, from a wider variety of colors, smells, and sounds that are outside of the range of your senses to detect, but also blind spots in your field of vision that are obscured by bundles of nerves, and even the way your brain chooses to represent waves of light as particular colors. Those are all subjective experiences. What you experience as consciousness, everything you see and feel, is not a direct experience of the real world, but instead the way that your brain chooses to represent that information. Not only that, your brain also does this amazing computational trick with that simulation to manage and fix the time lag by speeding up the simulation exactly by one-fifth of one second. Now just think about how bizarre that is. Your brain has this amazing power not only to synthesize all of the sensory data from the world into a coherent illusion that is what you experience, but it also is able to make predictions about what the environment will likely be in one-fifth of a second into the future. So while you don't experience the world in real time, you're actually able to act in real time. Think of it this way. If you were going to play catch with a friend, and every time you tried to move your hand in relation to the ball that was coming to you, and you were a fifth of a second late, you would be in the wrong spot 100% of the time. The only way that you can actually catch and throw anything is that if your brain compensates for that lag and actually corrects for the ball's position in space and time by predicting where it's going to be. In other words, yes, you do live in a simulation, but you're not Neo in the Matrix, don't worry. That simulation is of the real world, and it's the world that your body moves around in, but it's a simulation nonetheless. Now, there are some pretty big implications for this. Not not only do you receive information from the world just a little bit late, but just like how your senses don't correctly capture all of the data in the environment, sometimes the brain's predictions about things are simply not accurate. Your brain makes mistakes about how something might be moving in the world or other events in your immediate environment that it could not see coming. And while this is all fascinating and very well-established neuroscience, it actually gets a lot weirder when you think about this process in terms of dreaming and sleep. And this is where my existential crisis really kicked in. Everything we experience is part of a simulation. It's not the reality that actually exists outside of our skin. It's the construct our brain makes. And I personally believe that it's a pretty accurate representation of what's out there, but there's no doubt that it's being mediated by physical limitations and cognitive processes. These rules flip on their heads entirely in dreams. Unlike being awake, dreams happen within the simulated environment 
environment that our brains create. I've done videos on dreaming in this channel and other places, and I recommend checking out this entire playlist to understand all of the context and mechanisms here. But what's important to understand is that for all intents and purposes, dreams are simulated environments in the same way that real world experiences are also simulated environments. The disconnected narratives of you fleeing from bank robbers while you're late for getting onto a plane, only to end up in your childhood bedroom, which is a dream that I have sort of frequently, is formed out of the same basic sensory processes that allow you to get information from the outside world. And also your body in those moments really does think that that environment is real. However, when your dream, and this is the key part, your brain does not have to speed up that simulation since all of the data is already stored inside your brain. So from a certain perspective, dreaming is actually a truer form of human consciousness than the reality that we experience while we're awake. This is the root of my very small existential crisis. The simulation we live in of the real world is made out of the exact same stuff that dreams are made of. Dreams is being awake. Being awake is dreaming. Now, sure, those waking dreams are based on real world data, but you experience dreams more directly than you do the environment. Again, it doesn't mean that we're all hooked up to computers in some sort of massive AI controlled simulation. Instead, I take this as a way to rethink our relationship between the boundaries of who we are when we're awake and who we are when we're asleep. What does this mean for the nature of consciousness that dreams are more real than lived experience? Experiences, or that lived experiences are just as unreal as dreams. And if dreams are really important, why is that we don't usually remember them when we wake up? Now I've answered these questions elsewhere in this playlist. For now, I'm gonna leave you with just one last thought to chew on. You are what you dream because there's no other option except to dream. Thank you for being here and I'll see you in the next video.